and welcome to our thrifty and frugal and money-saving home here in Brittany in Northwest France. My name is Jane, my husband Michael is behind the camera and we are retired and every Wednesday we welcome you to our midweek money chat and this week's midweek money chat is seven practical ways to live below your means. Now before I go any further, I want to add a really important point here. I am absolutely and acutely aware that some people's means are at breaking point. They've already got two jobs. They're already paying as much as one job's worth for childcare, for example. I'm really aware of that. I'm aware that rising prices, rising rents, and all of those things are swallowing incomes as fast as people can earn them. So I'm really aware of the fact that some people are in real dire straits. My midweek money chat is focusing on the people who do have some flexibility, who do have some options, who maybe want to save more or maybe pay off more debt, and therefore have the means in which to live below. My first point is about knowing the difference between a want and a need and buying what you need and leaving what you want for maybe another time in your budget. Now everybody says this, don't they? Know the difference between a want and a need and it's glib and it's easy, but it's not easy for some people because we are people. We have emotions and we have feelings. Sometimes we feel bored or frustrated or lonely or hormonal or sad or left out or put aside. We feel these emotions. And sometimes we compensate with those, for those emotions by spending some money. So we might walk out of our garden, into our garden, for example, and think, oh, my garden is so, dull and I don't like it. And then next thing you know, you're in the market and you're buying 10 geranium plants because you feel it's meeting some kind of need. Is it a need? Is something you need to be asking yourself on a very regular basis. All very well buying something like that if it's on your budget and you have decided that it's something in your discretionary spending that you can afford. So coming back to that, knowing the difference between a need and a want. Sometimes emotions will convince you it's a need. But take a breath. Don't buy it that day. Step back, look at your budget. Is it on my budget? If it isn't, it's probably a want and it might need to wait a while. If you're watching this and you're British, you'll know about that advert that tells you to go compare. Well, that's all right if you're comparing insurance, if you're comparing prices, but you must never do if you want to live beneath your means. Is don't compare yourself to other people. Don't compare your car, don't compare your house, don't compare your clothes, don't compare your makeup, don't compare your children's toys, don't compare your children's activities with anybody else's. Imagine this if you would, imagine a world where there's no Facebook, no Pinterest, no social media, no Instagram. Can you imagine that world? Because I grew up in that world and I remember I could compare myself with the kids who lived down the street and they didn't have anything different than I had. So we weren't comparing, but the world is different now. And there is this culture of greed this culture of stuff, this culture of ownership. You can't have a house anymore, you've got to have a grand design. You can't just decorate your house when you get married and live in it for the rest of your life like our parents did. Oh no, you've got to give it a refresh. Don't compare. If you want to live beneath your means, don't compare. Do not go compare, don't compare. Now the biggest way to live without beneath your means 
Oh, and everybody says this. This is a thing that all the frugal people say, isn't it? Is make your own meals. Well, I'm going to go a bit further than that. Because in the same way that we feel the need to compare ourselves with people who have stuff, we also feel sometimes we need to compare ourselves with people who have this thing called lifestyle. And I've had people try and guilt me about it. So you live in France, but you don't eat out. You don't go for lunches. Oh, what about that culture of eating out? And no, I don't do it. It's not in my budget. I want to live beneath my means so I can save for those rainy days that we know are going to happen. So when I say cook your food at home, entertain at home. If you're gonna meet up with friends, meet up, take a picnic of food you have cooked from home. If you're gonna go out on a day trip, enjoy yourself by all means, but take a picnic of food that you have made from home. Going to someone's birthday, take a plate of sausage rolls, take a quiche you've made, take some little cakes that you've baked from the food you've got at home. I'm not saying never eat out, and Mike and I, we always make up a big thing of going out to eat on our wedding anniversary, and it's a very special treat for us, and we really, really enjoy it. If it is within your budget, and you can still live within your means and go out and eat, that's great. Enjoy it all and every step of the way. But if your means are here, and you need to save, and you need to live beneath your means to save, or pay off debt, eating at home, cooking all your own food, taking your own food with you on day trips, and journeys, and picnics, is the biggest, simplest, and easiest way to have some spare in your budget to live beneath your means. <music>and I take this very seriously myself, is I ignore the food snobs. It's all very well for some people to be telling you that you should be eating organic this, or low fat that, or no sugar this, or no sugar that. You know what? There are people eating today, and the only reason they are eating today it's because they got food from a food pantry or a food bank. So if you are putting food on your table for your family, you're a lucky one. You are a lucky one. So I want you, in the same way as I don't want you to compare your house or your clothes or your food, I want you to stop worrying about what you're putting on your table. If you are opening a tin of tuna, putting that in a baked potato, cooking up some frozen vegetables, you are giving somebody a really healthy, balanced meal there. That's a good meal. If you're giving someone a chicken stew made from the chicken thighs and a few frozen vegetables and some mashed potatoes, you're giving someone a good meal there. It's humble food. So shop your pantry, use up your pasta, use up your rice, eat from tins, eat frozen. Buy the cheaper cuts of meat, please. Ignore the food snobs. They're not paying your grocery bills. They're not feeding your family. So you're doing the best you can. Step back, feel proud of that, and it will help you quite confidently to live beneath your means. part has a small title but it's quite a big and all-encompassing area in which people like us live very much below our means and the title of that is invest time in money saving so do you know when your supermarket makes its final reductions of the day we when we lived in Liscard in Cornwall knew on a Sunday afternoon when our local co-op for example was making its final reductions and we could walk out with loaves of bread, bags of fruit and vegetables for pennies. So do your research. 
The next part is food saving apps such as Olio or Too Good To Go. They are better in some areas than others. They can be a bit hit and miss here in France, but they are an excellent way of saving food waste and for you to save money. Know your local community really well. When are the plant sales on by the local fundraisers that you can buy for your garden? When are the seed swaps? When are the clothing swaps? They do book swaps, all of those things. Does your community have a, an, a disused phone box in which you can leave books or take books? These are also great things in the community where you can give the, you, things that you no longer need or want to other people. In your research, you're looking for the best deal for absolutely everything, whether it's home insurance, car insurance, it's uh, your energy deal, or the supermarkets that you swap in. It's always worth your time to take time to find the best prices, and that time will help you live well below your means. <music>had to do this is all about either changing your social status or changing your social group. I'm not talking about changing your friends. Your friends and people who mean something to you and you mean something to them will be by your side and be your friends and be the people who love you whether you are saving money or spending money. But changing your social group might be the people who aren't supporting your viewpoints, who are using emotional blackmail, who do say things to you like, oh, I couldn't live the way you do, it's boring. Who might be saying unkind or unpleasant things to you, just like that. Is it time to change your social group or your social status? Are you trying to keep up with a group who you genuinely don't want to impress? The old adage is, are you spending money to impress other people? Are you doing that? Because if you do, it's, it's certainly not conducive to living beneath your means. Don't forget, your friends will be your friends. Even if you say, I'm sorry, I can't afford to do that. Your friends are people who care, who will be inclusive, who would say to you, okay, we'll do something else then, we'll do something else. So, maybe change your social group. My final point as a practical piece of advice to live beneath your means is get support. And what I mean by that is be around and with like-minded people. Sometimes that might mean virtually. Sometimes that might mean you use social media for its positive effects. That you might join groups about budgeting. You might join groups about budgeting for your food budget or paying down debts. Being part of that frugal community of people who are taking their hard earned money or pension or however and spending it wisely and being around those people. It's really quite difficult if you are around people who are criticising you because of the choices that you feel are right for your family. Mike and I luckily know people who share our viewpoints and that is much, it's really easier for us and it, is, and it supports us. It supports our values and it supports our ideals and how we want to live. So my last piece of advice is get support by being amongst like-minded people who want to live differently or beneath their means and that will help you on your journey to living beneath 
your means. Well, I hope that that was helpful. I do like our midweek money chats and I know that you enjoy them too. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy our videos, give them a like. It really does help us. Thank you to everybody as well who lets the advertisements roll, not just for me, but all YouTube creators. It's how the YouTube creators earn some money from Google AdSense. So thank you so much for that support. If you like what we do here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell as well, so you don't miss any of our new videos. Just pleased me to say thank you so much for watching. And best of all, thank you so much to everybody who leaves a comment. We really, really do appreciate that. And I'll see you again very soon. Goodbye for now.